It's just a toy, see? Well, it might be just a toy to you, but for us fixies, it's absolutely real. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. I know what you're saying, but where do we get a burner? You think fixies don't have their own burners? Huh. Sure we've got them. Bring it down here, and I'll go talk to our parents. No, no, and no. The human child must never see us. Listen now, Simka. We already don't approve of him seeing you and Nolik. He won't look. Papas, please. You're the one who told us how you dreamed of flying since you trained to go into space. Yeah. For two years I waited on standby, but I never went up. And you've never flown in a hot air balloon either, honey. So let's call it a deal. I talked them into it. There's just one condition. You can't watch. Okay. You can come in now. Now prepare the burner. Coming right up. <gasps> Permission for takeoff? Permission is granted. And off we go. Don't you peek! Turn around! Oh, it was an accident. I'm going to evaluate the damage. Maintaining proper altitude! So, they've reached the spot. Air balloons are really awesome. I wonder, who figured out how to do that? It was the Montgolfiers. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first Fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. Following the Fixies' flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers. Tidish! All right. Simka, please let your parents know that I'm so very thankful. Okay. By the way, now you can turn around. You know, Simka, let's fly the balloon just like them. 
There's no way, Nolik. We would need to use the burner, and kids aren't allowed to play with fire. I'll give you a ride. Look, I still need to put it back up on the shelf, so climb in and let's do it. That's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh. From here, you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on. But where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the North Magnetic Pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the South. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy! Monster on the horizon! Let him do it himself. He... <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly! I counted on myself! Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go... One, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes, it's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. 
The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Invisible ink. Tell anyone? Nobody. We promise. Uh, are you gonna open that thing or not? Huh. There's nothing there. Hmm. Is this a joke or something? Maybe she didn't feel like writing you anything. Then why would she put a note in there? Wait a second. And what if she wrote that letter with a special kind of invisible ink? Wow, I've never heard of it. If you want to keep what's written in a letter secret, you can write it with a special liquid called invisible ink or security ink. You can make invisible ink yourself by mixing lemon juice, milk, or baking soda with water. Then just dip a stick or a brush in it and write on a plain piece of paper like this. You can't see anything, right? To make the invisible ink visible again, the paper needs to be warmed up with something like an iron. But that's a secret. Well, Simka, you might be right. Only what about the iron? I can't use it. But your mom can, and right now she's doing the ironing. Yeah? Well, that changes everything. Hold on! If that really is a secret letter, then no one should be allowed to see it. Even your mother. What can I do then? Ah, I know what. Mom, can you iron my shirt too, please, will ya? What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong, it's just that the pocket's wrinkled. Ah, sure, I'll do it. Since when did you start worrying about things like this? All done. Thanks, Mom. <sighs> that should do it. What? What is it? Huh? Tom Thomas, I really like you. <laughs> Katya. Katya is in love with you, isn't she? And what about you? Do you like her? Uh, I don't know. She does get straight A's. You like her! 
You and Katya kissing in a tree. K.O. No, oh. Stop your teasing. Well, are you gonna write her back? You think I should? Of course, silly. I'm scared that someone will see it. Then why don't you write it with invisible ink, like she did? Yeah, go get a lemon. Nowadays, it isn't very common for people to write letters by hand and send them by regular mail. Today, people mostly send letters through the Internet. But even electronic letters should be written with some of the same simple rules of politeness used in handwritten letters. For instance, you need to write a greeting at the beginning of your letter, and a few kind words at the end are always appreciated. Something like hugs and kisses, or all the best, or see you soon. And before you send off your letter, it's best to read it through to check for any mistakes. And one more thing. If you receive a message from someone, don't take too long to answer them, because they might think that you'd forgotten about them, and that can hurt their feelings. To say it simply, when you're right, be polite. Go on, write. And what should I write? Come on, tell the truth. Just write this. Forgive me, Katya. Only there's another girl I really like. My one and only Simka. Mm. No lick! If you don't like it, then why don't you think it up? Tom Thomas, just go ahead and write how you feel deep down in your heart for Katya. Katya, I like you too. Like that? Is that all I have to write? Would that be okay? It's lovely. K-I-S-S-I. Just zip it, will ya? Tom Thomas, is that everything? And did you make sure to check that you didn't make any mistakes? No, but I'll check right now. Huh, all the words disappeared. Well, if there's something wrong, only Katya will find it. Pixies go to fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a picture, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a picture, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a picture, please don't let their secret out. Shh. Tubes. Today's lesson will be on pipes and tubing. Right here inside of this laboratory, you can see them all over. Look! Over there! And there! Some more over there, and there's another one! So, who can tell me some different uses for tubes? Digit! Uh, They're used in plumbing to carry the water. No, like, in school we don't give an answer without being called on. Digit! You can... And for carrying waste! I am talking to Digit now! Gas goes through pipes, too! Stop interrupting us! And don't forget about smoke in a smokestack! No, like, that's just rude behavior! Out! Right now! All right! And a shower hose! That's also a tube, right? I told you to get out! Yikes! And a vacuum cleaner's got one, too! Hmm. And those spy glasses that pirates use when they're sailing! Hey, what do you say we all go and sneak out of here? Great idea. Let him call out to himself. Shh. And a trumpet's a tube that you blow through. <laughs> Nolik is my younger brother. There's a lot he still doesn't know, but that doesn't stop him from getting involved in things he probably shouldn't. Unfortunately, that can get him into trouble. So, every once in a while, me or my parents have to rescue him. No, I wouldn't call Nolik a pest. He's just a bit curious. That's why he broke the number one fixie rule, hide from humans. Nolik's the one who first became friends with Tom Thomas. Well, I was there too, but Nolik started it. Actually, <laughs> first it was Grandpus. Many years ago, he befriended Professor Eugenius. And after that, the professor let us have our school in his laboratory. So it turns out that Nolik is just like his grandfather. Digit, go on then. 
tubes are. Uh... Wow! Just look at all the tubes in here. <sighs> There's rubber ones and glass ones that are curvy. Oh, yeah! Pens! Parts of them are tubes, too. Ugh. Um... <laughs> he stopped talking. He ran out of ideas. Slides at the water park. <laughs> the barrel of a rifle and the shell of a bullet. Those are tubes. Oh, there's a tube with a serious crack. And it's also dripping and hissing. It's dripping? Where? How can I show you when you kick me out of class? <laughs> What's going on? Take a look. That tube up there is leaking. <gasps> That's acid dripping out. Is that dangerous? It's awful. Any second now, it'll explode. <gasps> <gasps> Where did Professor Eugenius go? He went to eat his sandwich. So what do we do? It's a disaster. Don't panic. Fire Verda. Go to that hose and shut off that valve. Simka, go get a pack of map. We'll fix this pipe ourselves. It's very important to be sure that a pipe won't leak. But making pipes that won't leak isn't so easy. Pipes can be made by rolling up a sheet of metal and sealing it up. Unfortunately, the seam can break. And that's why people have figured out how to make pipes without seams. They do it by stretching out hot metal on special machines. And PVC pipes are squeezed out of hot plastic like pasta. When the plastic is cooled down, it hardens into a pipe. We fix it just in time. Know it. Way to go there. Hey, Simka, where is he? Don't know. Heh, <laughs> he finally left. Here I am. Nolik, I want to thank you for being alert. And I'd like you to join our class. Tiddish! Only don't forget, in my class, students cannot answer unless they're called on. Now then, pipes and tubing. Digit, please continue. Well? But Nolik said all of them already. <laughs> <laughs> Nolik. Not all. A straw for drinking a shake is a tube. And some noodles are tubes made out of dough. And what's it called? Uh, that thing. A hole in a mountain. Wait a second, I'll get it. A volcano! That's not it. They go this way. I mean the kind that go like that. <laughs> They're tunnels! You got it! Well done there. Yeah. Please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out.